After the miracle, what next? After the healing, what next? After the freedom, what next? Point number one, the purpose of freedom through Christ. You remember the story of the children of Israel, the story of their freedom. I was looking at the message that Moses brought to Pharaoh. And you remember the message, let my people, tell me out loud, let my people go, freedom. They will not be in captivity again. But I'm asking myself the question, why were they set free? What was the purpose? Why? Always ask, why? I'm waking up this morning, I'm strong, why? I get up this morning and my body is free. And my limbs are strong. And I lift up my shoulders. And I look at the mirror. I say, I like the man I see in the mirror. There is no trace of sickness. You are strong. And then the next question is, why the purpose of our freedom through Christ? Let's see, let my people go. Why? What's the purpose? Let's look at Exodus chapter 7 verse 16. Exodus 7 verse 16. You see the purpose. It says, and thou shalt say unto him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, read the rest, that they may serve me, that they may serve me. That's the reason for their freedom. There is always a reason, there's always a why, there's always a purpose for the deliverance. Let my people go, that they may serve me. Chapter 8, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go. Tell me the rest that they may serve me. You know, there is a purpose for the freedom. Let them go out of captivity, out of bondage, out of imprisonment. Some people don't know how to profit from their freedom. Some people don't know how to have a productive kind of life after the freedom. Let my people go that they may serve me. Verse 20. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, That thus says the Lord, everybody, let's read together. Let my people go that they may serve me. That's the third time. Let my people go. There's a reason for it. There's a purpose for it. That they may serve me. Chapter 9 verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. It tells you something. If those people came out of the land of Egypt and then they folded their hands, and they just ate manna. And they said, praise the Lord. We've got manna to eat. That's not the purpose. That's just an added miracle. To give you strength. That will be able to fulfill the real purpose of the freedom. Praise the Lord. We got water out of the rock. That's a great miracle. My dear friend. The purpose of coming out of Egypt. It's not just to drink water out of the rock. There is a purpose. Let my people go that they may serve me. You know there are some people that don't understand. They come to the church. And the Lord sets them free from sin. I'm saved. And so they come on a miracle revival evangelism day. And they come to give testimony. I am saved. And I want to ask them. After salvation what next? And then they come next week, they say, you know, this God is wonderful. This God is, is wonderful to serve this God. Do you know, I was sick during the week. And you know, the Lord, I just say in the name of Jesus, I was healed. And I want to ask them, after the healing, what next? Then they come the following, they come the following Thursday. And then they said, you know, God is wonderful. I was going to visit my friend. And then there was an accident nearby. And the vehicle almost crushed 
my leg and the Holy Ghost just took me away and put me by the side of the road and then I'm rejoicing, I'm saying God is wonderful, I got another miracle, I said but why, after you have been spared and protected, what is the risk, people don't know people don't know, and all they think about is, I've got miracle I've got miracle, let my people go that they may serve me not only to drink water out of the rock, not only to have manna to eat, not only to conquer the Amalekites, not only con to conquer the Hittites, not only to eat the pomegranates of the land, but it is that they may serve me. Find out why you're free. Find out this is a brand new life. It is free, free from sin, free from sickness. Free from evil spirits, free from snares, and free from Satan. There's freedom. How am I going to use the freedom to make my life better, to provide for my family? Why is the freedom given unto me? You have a brain. Why? You have good eyesight. Why? You have legs to walk. Why? You have hands to walk. Why? You have a good, strong body. Why? Why the freedom? In Exodus chapter 9 verse 13. Exodus chapter 9 verse 13. And the Lord said, Unto Moses, rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and stay unto him. Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Every time the Lord said, Let my people go, He told them the why, the reason, the purpose, the cause. The reason why they were being set free. Chapter 10, verse 3. In chapter 10, verse 3, And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh, and said unto him, that Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long that she will thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, tell me the rest. That they may serve me. By now Pharaoh knew that the freedom was not for joke. It's not just to set them free. You know, Pharaoh had said, Yeah, idol, yeah, idol. Yeah, idol, yeah, idol. You want to be free and then just go and be idle. You want to be free and become a, a nothing. And just fold your hand and just singing hallelujah, praise the Lord, we're free. That's not the reason why. Not to fold your hand. The reason that we're being set free, let my people go that they may serve me. Discover the purpose of your freedom. And be asking yourself, why? When you wake up in the morning tomorrow, here is a new day. Why am I alive today? Why has God given me an extra day? What am I going to do today to justify that I'm still alive today, that I didn't die yesterday? Why has the Lord brought me to this freedom celebration? And now I have faith, I have joy, I have life, I have happiness. Why am I alive today? When you are selling, you have money in your hand. Don't just squander it and throw it away. Here is money and there is freedom to spend the money or to save the money or to invest the money. The question is why is this money in my hand? Why is this money in our family? Here is a new child that has been born into the family. Don't just, you know, it's good to give testimony. Praise the Lord. We have a new child in the family. But have you asked the question, why? This child could have gone to another family. Why? Has the Lord brought this child into this family? Always ask the question, why? Because when you ask the question, why? A lot of answers will come. A lot of answers will come. And then you'll be writing the answers down. This is the reason the Lord is telling me. This is the purpose the Lord is telling me. And then as you see that purpose, you'll be walking on that purpose. You'll be acting on that purpose. Do you remember that man in uh, Mark chapter 5? He was insane. He had made up of, he had legions of evil spirits to mention him. And then the Lord Jesus Christ met him. When the Lord Jesus Christ met him, he drove away the evil spirit. The man was free. 
But he didn't know why. So he wanted to be following after Jesus, doing nothing. But now you are well. But now you have a strong body. But now you are free. Go back home. Go back home to your friends and tell them, let my people go that they may serve me. And tell them how great things the Lord has done for you. You see, there's always a purpose why. If there's a purpose why, it means you have a future. I said you have a future. But you know, if you don't plan the future, tomorrow will come and go. Tomorrow will come and go. Tomorrow will come and go. And then Monday, you wake up on Monday and you're not asking why. Why? Why has Monday come? And Monday has met me without any bondage, without any sickness, without any limitation. Monday has met me without any calamity. Why? What's the purpose of this day? If you don't think about that, Monday will come and go. It's like the right in the Bible more than 450 times and it came to pass. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Monday has come, it came to pass. It just passed away. And Tuesday comes, it came to pass. And Wednesday came, it came to pass. For many, many people, every week comes and it goes. Every year comes and it goes. They are not asking themselves the joy we have. The liberty we have, the freedom we have, the energy we have. Why do we allow it to just, it came to pass. Just tell yourself, it has come. What use can I make of this freedom before it passes away? Point number two, planning the future with courage. Planning the future with courage. And when I say planning the future with courage, let me ask you a question. If you didn't have any limitation, and if you knew you will have all the money you need to do a particular thing, what will you plan to do? If you knew that anybody you talk to will respond and give his life to the Lord, and they will not resist you. They will not reject the message. They will just open their ears, open their mind, open their mouth, surprised that you are talking the way you are talking. What will you do with the message you have? How will you give it out? If you knew that people will not say no to you, what will you do? You know, there are many people that they are afraid to ask. Afraid to ask. They're very timid. They cannot ask. They cannot talk to strangers. Please, can you tell me? I'm going to such and such a place. Can you tell me how to get there? They're afraid. What if the person says no? What if the person says don't trouble me? They're timid. They cannot ask. But let's say, for example, you need a hundred naira. And look at this large crowd here. And you come, you start from the first row. And you say, my brother, I need a hundred naira. Can you give me a hundred naira? And the brother says, no. Before you ask, did you have a hundred naira? Before you ask, did you have the hundred naira? No. After you ask, and he said, no. Have you got the hundred naira? Have you lost anything? You're not lost. Why are you afraid? Ask him. He says, no, you go to the next person. Please, I need a hundred naira. Seriously now, can you give me? He says, no, no problem. You go to the next one. Before you go to all these places, all these people here, somebody, somebody, somebody like me. I said somebody like me. Will give you more than one hundred naira. Ask them, ask, and you will be given. Seek, and you will find. No, I shall be open. There are opportunities in life. Don't be timid. Live your life and plan your future. And plan a future that will be profitable. Your life will be profitable. Planning, planning the future with courage. In Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29. I'm reading from verse 18. Proverbs chapter 29. I'm reading from verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, 
If you don't plan for the future, you will not have war. Plan. Plan for each week. Plan for each month. How do you plan? There's a particular subject, a particular area that I need to improve my life. And I know I have the materials to read on them. If you read only one hour a day in this month, you read for 30 hours. Just, even if it's 30 minutes a day, you read 15 minutes. If you want to develop your faith, I know with faith I can get everything I need. But my problem is my faith is not strong. All right, we have a lot of cases on faith and you listen one hour each day and then for 30 days you would have listened to a message to that message of faith for 30 hours and as it's coming into you it will be developing your faith because faith coming by hearing hearing by the word of god in my place of work they are, they are advertising my position because you know a technology has improved there is not what you call it information technology internet, internet technology and my my company they're looking for somebody who is versatile in computer and i'm about to lose my job they have advertised my job and they're saying i can also apply and if i apply and they apply i know the edge that they're going to have above me it's in this computer where i'm ignorant what are you going to do? Spend one hour a day and plan your future. And don't let the younger people come and take your job. You can plan your life now that you are free. Because now you are going to succeed in everything that you do. There is no fear anymore that Satan will hinder you, that evil spirit will hinder you, that sickness will hinder you, that a man will hinder you. Nobody will stand in your way now. Now you can plan the future and you will make it in Jesus' name. But you know you have to plan it because...